see Uncle Rodis again with another video. Um, I've been at some concerts for the last three nights in a row, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, now Sunday, and um, yeah, it's pretty late nights. Um, yeah, I bought one record at one of the concerts um, on the Thursday night, which is in this pile, and then last night, yeah, last night was supposed to be a, quite a big event um, with seven bands playing. Unfortunately, we've had some major rain in the South Island and some of the bands couldn't make it up from Dunedin and I'm not sure about the other ones where they couldn't get down from up north because they couldn't fly in, but um, at the end of the day they cancelled the, the show, but one of the bands from Wellington who was in Dunedin the night before and managed to get up here and so pretty much at the last minute I saw on Facebook that they were going to be there and that was the band I really wanted to see the most. Um, that was All Seeing Hand from Wellington who I had shown a record many, many moons back. Anyway, the, the Dark Room concert venue um, is next to Little Galaxy Records and the guy from Galaxy Records who actually I had seen the night before and his band playing at the um, Terminals gig. Uh, here's a band called Les Baxters which are a um, kind of industrial electro cabaret Voltaire sort of thing. Quite cool actually. Um, so anyway, he, he opened up the shop um, for a while last night and I browsed through his bins again and there was some stuff which I'd sort of he'd been, had there for a while, I'd sort of had my eye on and was sort of humming and harring about it and I finally decided to bite the bullet, so to speak. <laughs> and the reason I'm re using that pun <laughs> is because playing in the background is this and they're called Bullet Belt. This is their latest album. They actually played at the Dark Room. I was tempted, but <sighs> New Zealand has a pretty big metal scene, especially death metal and really hardcore metal stuff. Um, and a lot of it, I find it's pretty hard to handle. Um, you know, it's pretty thrashy. I mean, I've got the Beast Wars and um, I've got another CD I quite like, but I haven't got a lot of New Zealand metal, but it, it comes in so many different variations. Um, this has got a great cover. Yeah, so these were, he, he had two of them sitting there. So this is a gatefold. Um, as you can see, some of these guys aren't spring chickens. They've been around a year or two. This is a fantastic um, cover. Really cool. Almost worth the price of admission itself. Um, I had heard a track off them. It's apparently a female singer in the background there, which is her with the horns in the middle, if you can see that. Yeah, so this was, they've been around a wee while, and they've got about three or four albums out, but they've only got two vinyl releases, and this is one of them. And the other one is an EP, although it's a pretty long EP. It's a 45 RPM, but it's got seven tracks, and a couple of them are about six minutes long, so um, that's pretty cool. This, these albums were released, this is from 2012, Headless Horseman, um, again quite cool cover, uh, it's got a nice picture insert with the lyrics and stuff. Uh, I haven't listened to this yet but I think this was before the little girl joined the band. Must be hard on the throat singing like that I tell you. Um, yeah so I decided to pick them up and add them to my collection because I mean I am a New Zealand music collector and you know it's not really bad. Stuff or anything like that. So, um, also in the shop last night, I decided to grab this, and I've been humming and harring for a while. This is a Flying Nun reissue of the classic Verlaine's All the Way Home, Hallelujah All the Way Home. This is their first album from ooh, 1985. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same as the original. To be honest, I. I was never a huge fan of the Verlaines, but I really do like their their, their signature song, Death and the Maiden, um, which I have in a compilation, which is not on this LP. Um, I've only had one listen to this, it's, it's very Baroque, very Baroque sounding actually, um, indie pop sort of thing, for, uh, Flying Nun, but yeah, these are one of the original top Flying Nun bands. Actually, weren't the Verlaines, I'm pretty sure they were on the very first Dunedin EP, weren't they? Anyway. So, yeah, uh, 2013, 
I think, 2014 reissue. Um, so it's a lot cheaper. I mean, I only paid 30, just over 30 bucks for that instead of the 50 bucks you pay for the originals because I have seen an original recently. Um, and also in the shop last night, I picked up these. This is an album by a woman who calls herself Bachelorette. Uh, location loops, isolation loops. Um, Annabelle, Annabelle Alpers is her name, and she's got this. I'm not sure which order these are. I mean, this is kind of like an indie pop. I had a quick listen. I've heard some of her stuff on Chris's radio show. Um, I had a quick listen sort of this morning to one of them. Um, and oh yeah, they're okay. I, I I need to give them a bit of attention and see. You know, some I remember hearing was okay. My Electric Family, this album, um, and the last one was an E 12 inch 45 EP um, called The End of Things. This is a seven track EP as well. Um, and I think there's another record album out, so she's got three albums out, this EP and I think some other stuff. Um, apparently she's not that active at the moment. I remember Chris was wondering about her recently on one of his radio shows. So, um, but she, uh, I've got a feeling she must be from Christchurch because Dave said that she was back in the country and had dropped these in to him to sell on her behalf or something to that effect. Um, as I said, I've been to some concerts, and on Thursday night I saw these guys, the Bads, Losing Heroes. This is their third or fourth album. Um, this, this is a, well, the leaders, um, are Brett Anderson and Diane Swan, and they've been around the New Zealand music scene for a good 30 plus years. Apparently, Brian, Brett Adams, and I didn't really know the name, but he was in the Mockers way back in the early 80s, and I remember the Mockers were pretty big. Um, Andrew Fagan and the Mockers. Yeah. The Mockers weren't my cup of tea, to be honest. Um, never really got into their music too much, but um, Brett Adams is a fantastic guitarist, and seeing these guys live, they were really good. It's kind of like an Americana inflected indie pop kind of stuff, yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're an awesome live band. He's a great guitarist. They got some pretty strong material, pretty strong songs. Um, listening to the record the next day was a little bit of a letdown, which sometimes can be after seeing something live like that. Um, yeah, but I, it is a good, well-crafted album. And it actually fits quite nicely with the Miltons. If you remember anybody that watches my videos regularly, remember I've seen the Miltons and they were fantastic live and had a really good album. One of the bands that was supposed to play last night at this um, big gig thing was this band, Of Pain. And this is their debut album. From, you never know, it might be their only album if they don't know. They're actually a couple of Dunedinites from two Dunedin bands who I have records from. Um, the girls from, uh, what's their name? Be here somewhere. Can't even find it. Rene. Yeah, Rene and Tim Player. Rene Barents and Tim Player. Rene Barents. She's in a band called Opposite Sex, and they are really cool. I really like their music. And Tim is in Elaine Vitale, Vitale who are kind of a bit more electronic-y, interestingly. Um, and they had a new album that came out not that long ago. Um, so yeah, this, this album was released by Coco Muse Records. It's the second release. Now, I've actually been in communication with the guy Regan, who runs Coco Muse. And the first album that he put out was the um, the Motte Strange Dreams album, which I was showing a while back. And he, I thought there was some issues with the sound quality. I made a comment, and it turned out probably more than anything to just to be manufacturers gunk in the grooves, even though I'd cleaned it. Maybe it didn't all get it out, but anyway, he sent me another copy and is test pressing to have a listen to on my hi-fi gear. And I did a report for him on the sound quality, and he sent me this one as a. Um, to have a listen to, um, and I will end up getting a copy of it. Um, it's just, what's she playing? Organ and drums? He's, she's on organ, he's on drums, or vice versa? Not sure. Um, it's interesting, it's a beautiful piece of vinyl, sound wise. The vinyl is dead, dead quiet. I mean, you put the needle down in it, so it's so much better. He's, he's actually 
that's one of the reasons he's lent, uh, sent that copy to me is for me to have a listen to the sound quality of the vinyl because he had, he had some issues with the Moth A1. So um, this is a fantastic piece of vinyl. The recording itself is a little bit more lo-fi. It was recorded down at the anteroom in Dunedin, which is not which is just a really grotty old hall which we were at earlier in the year for some live stuff. Um, so it's not a proper studio, but you know a lot of these bands are really are uh, amateur, low-budget stuff, and that's how they get their music out. Um, so I picked up this out of um, Spain off Discogs. This is from Wawa Records. This is a compilation. Actually, this is the second volume. Electric Toxic So This is Volume 2 Band from Sevilla um, Early 70s This is kind of pop psych Yeah from well, It's like the 60s in Britain It's kind of like a few years behind um, So yeah it's pretty much Sort of psychedelic pop uh, Yeah quite interesting Listen um, not, not I wouldn't say it's fantastic But I, I like it And I think it'll, it'll grow on me and um, there's two volumes, that's the first volume and the second volume which looks pretty much identical but with a different colour. And these, uh, this is volume one and these bands are from Barcelona. And some notes, fairly good notes on the back. When, I, when they arrived I, was, I thought they were a bit beaten up when I sort of saw them but I realised what they've done is they've actually um, folded the covers up and there's a seam along there where the fold is so this is actually the back of the cover per se and then they stuck this big green uh, big ready thing on it and glued it on um, yeah and, and it's interesting the way they fold their records it's a bit of an old-fashioned way of doing it I quite like it and I'll show you another one these are, these are both from Wawa Records out of Barcelona in Spain and I've got some more records I'm about to show from them because I ordered another three records. Well, actually, I ordered the records before these ones, and these ones got here first. Um, the first one I ordered, and this is, I think this is from Wowwow as well. Oh, it looks like it is. Is that the same symbol they use? Maybe not. It's from Wowwow Records' Discog site, but this is Symphony Nervous. This is a Japanese minimal synth band. And this is a 1979 to 81 compilation or thoughts, I think, or or it's a reissue of an original album of, of material recorded from that time. Um, interesting packaging. Basically, it's a single sheet of cardboard in in a, in a flip top um, plastic sleeve, with and the actual writing is on the sleeve. I don't want to. Uh, too hard to pull the bloody thing out actually and the record was inside which is kind of difficult to get out so I've taken the record out and put it inside another plastic sleeve and it was similar to a compilation I showed you the other week um, and a, a nice clear see-through plastic and it's good sound quality on this yeah so I've only had a listen to it once that's very very clear see-through piece of vinyl that one um, Yeah, so the album's called Automaticism, and it was a 2011 reissue on on minimum minimal wave actually. So um, yeah, I remember reading about this, and I had a Symphony Nervous track on a, a compilation Japanese or a French reissue of a Japanese compilation of Vanity Records. No, hang on, let's get that right. It wasn't a reissue; it was a a compilation put together of Vanity Records records from the Japan in the late 70s, early 80s, and I think Symphony Nervous was one of the bands that was on that compilation from memory. And um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, and then the last two um, is reissues from Wawa again, and these are from New Zealand bands. This is a band called Ticket Awake. Uh, originally reissued in 1971. I think there's an original of this selling on Discogs for about 1400 New Zealand dollars, so um, I'd rather just pay 45 bucks for the reissue. And as I say, that, so this is what they do is they, you can see they fold the seams over onto the outside, which is the way they used to do them. I know, I know some early New Zealand presses I've got from the 60s and early 70s is like how we used to do that here. I quite like that, and it's quite solid and stable. Um, the vinyl's really nice and quiet and good and it's heavy 
Um, yeah, and the sound quality are, are pretty good reproductions, so I'm not sure of their sources, but uh, ticket, I actually have the CD reissue that came out on a different label a couple of years, no, probably three or four years ago now, which I haven't listened to it much, but um, this is a great classic New Zealand 70s rock. Uh, pleased to have that, and, and then this one's fairly new out, and this is the main reason I went on to the Discog site, although I could actually pick this up in New Zealand, but Space Farm, uh, Going Home to Eternity. No, that's not the name of the album. I think the album is just called Space Farm. Um, Space Farm were a band that evolved out of another great New Zealand band called the Underdogs, who were kind of like a psychedelic blues band from the very late 60s. This album was around about 1971-72 as well. Um, they have... Now what happened was originally the album came out and the guy Harvey Mann, who was from the Underdogs, they something happened, they, 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 yeah, the original release had him singing and then the second issue they decided, not the band, I think the record label decided to re-record the vocals by another member of Space Farm who had joined the group, whose name doesn't appear on here. And so that was the main issue that people were finding. So getting and then so the original issue was fairly limited and now sells for big do big dollars so they've restored the vocals from the original re issue onto this reissue um like the uh, awake album there's a quite a nice fold out with fairly extensive um notes on the band and and stuff so that's really cool and th this is a sort of a psychedelic blues as well it's pretty cool it's a pretty cool, it's a, it's a classic New Zealand album. Yeah, like I say, again, originals, I think five or six hundred dollars to buy those, not as much as a ticket, actually. I wonder what, um, Ticket actually had a second album out, um, Let Dogs Lie, I think it's called. Um, as a matter of fact, I've seen a cover without a record in it on the wall at Penny Lane, so obviously the record was completely trashed. Um, I'm not sure the record goes for as much. I don't think musically it was as strong, but it's still bloody rare, um, and I don't think it's been reissued either. So, yeah, two, two great New Zealand additions to my New Zealand collection. So quite a few New Zealand music um, stuff there, and like I say six albums I picked up last night at the gig, so um, quite a haul. So this is going to take a bit of getting used to for me, um, but um, yeah, I thought I'd give it a go, and you know, there's actually a big... Ooh, metal fest coming up at one of the venues in Christchurch, and I'm I'm kind of tempted to have a look, have a look and see what it's all like. You know, I mean, I've, I've got an open mind, but I do find it hard to. I do struggle a bit with this sort of music. I like the concept of heavy metal, and and when when you get a, a good album, that it, it can be fantastic. You know, and I like the, the the heaviness of it and all that stuff. But a lot of them, I mean, there is a lot of bands in New Zealand that play this sort of music. A lot of them aren't particularly good. Um, or imaginative and it's kind of like quite um, formulaic and they just thrash along and relentless beat and sort of you know stuff like that but anyway that's the end of the video because that's the end of the record and that's the end of all the records I've got to show you so that's me um these record these videos won't get posted for a while yet I've actually got two more re re ugh, videos in backlog so um, we'll get there eventually see you next